Welcome to Crackle and Rosie True Crime. I hope that you enjoy this podcast format where we will be taking segments of the Son of Sam case, breaking them down into digestible portions and discussing in comments and in later lives. Thank you for being here. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at Harvey Schlossberg, his background, his career with the NYPD, his involvement in the Son of Sam case, and we will briefly touch on his accomplishments after the Son of Sam case and later in his life. Enjoy the episode. A bit on his early life. Schlossberg was born in Manhattan on January 27, 1936. His father, Harry, worked as a mechanic. His mother, Sally, was a housewife. His family was Jewish, and his grandparents immigrated to the United States from Eastern Europe. He attended Eastern District High School in Brooklyn before studying chemistry at Brooklyn College. After graduating with a bachelor's degree in 1958, Schlossberg joined the NYPD to fund his postgraduate studies. He went on to obtain a master's degree in psychology from Long Island University and was awarded a doctorate in clinical psychology from the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences at Yeshiva University in 1971. What I found interesting about that information was that Schlossberg actually joined the NYPD at that time for the tuition reimbursement program. So he had his bachelor's degree and he needed a little assistance uh, pursuing his psychological studies. So I find that really cool. We will learn though, he was very appreciative and learned to love his police work. Let's carry on with a little bit about his career with NYPD. So Schlossberg first worked as a traffic officer in the accident investigation unit. But when they found out he had a doctorate in psychology, he was moved to the medical bureau. And there he performed emotional testing to assess the well-being of the prospective and current colleagues at the NYPD. He was made director of psychological services in 1974. He was also the founder of that department, of that unit. What some of you may not know is that Schlossberg had a heavy influence in the hostage negotiation protocols for the NYPD. But before we cover that, let's take a listen to his psychological assessment of the son of Sam while he was still at large. While police have been working on his physical characteristics, psychiatrists have been attempting to sketch a psychological profile to learn more about him. To feed a hungry press, the chief also released a profile of the killer. It would generate even more false leads for the task force. At the request of Joe, who was looking for any kind of lead he can get, narrowing down the personality, what we did was typical crime scene analysis. We tried to evaluate what was there. Since there was no evidence, that indicated somebody that wanted a cat and mouth game with the police. Harvey was a police officer, but he was a psychologist. And he prepared a profile of what he thought the shooter was. We gave him all the information on the prior incidents, thinking that maybe it was the same guy. The first thing I said to Joe that we're dealing with a psychopath. This is the kind of guy that has no conscience, has no feeling for other people, uses people to satisfy his own needs, He needs immediate gratification. He can't wait. Uh, Don't tell me what you're going to do for me tomorrow. Tell me what you're going to do for me now. Of all the experts that we had subsequent, when the case got really big and they brought in these renowned people, no one came as good as Harvey's original profile. So what he does has to be very dramatic, uh, very flashy, and he needs that immediate feedback, for example, from the media or from the police reaction to what he does. And now let's take a listen to his assessment of the infamous Borelli letter. I'm deeply hurt by you calling me a woman hater. I'm not, but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. 
When Joe first showed me that letter, my immediate reaction was, this is a guy that's trying to build a reputation for himself so that he'd be known, that his name would be recognized. Uh, when people heard his name, they'd be frightened. Uh, it would show he was powerful and he had an identity. Being an anonymous killer would not give him any satisfaction. And the letter was designed to give the police uh, a variety of incoherent leads, which he knew would lead them no place. And at the same time, create the impression that there was something psychiatrically wrong with him so that he was unpredictable. In 1974, Harvey Schlossberg, in conjunction with Lucy Freeman, released the book Psychologist with a Gun. It was released June 1, 1974. Patrolman Schlossberg, Ph.D., came to public attention as a result of a 1973 incident in which 12 hostages were taken by four men in a Brooklyn sporting goods store. Schlossberg urged restraint rather than frontal assault, and his strategy surely paid off in his book. He retells the dramatic moments and offers an account of these circumstances. The book is very interesting, and if you would like to check it out, you can read it on archives.org or you can order a copy. Next, we're going to take a look at a short clip and it details Schlossberg's involvement in a training for hostage negotiation and it's circa early 1970s. It's a really cool clip, so get comfy and pay attention. You normally end up getting a name. Uh, maybe what I'm asking is how big a deal do you make out of it? Because you are trying to build up- What do you want me to call you? Floor. Usually it's just, hey, my name is Frank. What's is yours? That, that became an issue yesterday. Yeah. He doesn't have to tell you. Wh whatever you say, no problem. Uh, my name is Frank, you know, and that's it. And while we're on that subject, a lot of times guys would say, well, should I say I'm a, I'm a cop or what? If you just tell them, I am Frank Bowles, the police department negotiator. And now you're identifying who you are, your first name, your last name, police department negotiator. It gives you some authority, but the term negotiator is a nice term. I mean, there's nothing bad ever associated with negotiators. I think uh, if, I, if I could, you know, cut it so we could move ahead, just... Co-author of the program and partner in Bowles' double act is Harvey Schlossberg, a former detective with a degree in psychology. Remember the basic concept. This guy wants attention, he wants uh, 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 people running around doing his thing. He don't really care what you think, what you think of him, and he don't want to kill anybody, so he won't hear the mistakes you make. You can say a lot of things wrong, it doesn't really matter. One of the things that upsets me about role playing, now role playing is good. It's a good way to learn, but what upsets me about it is it always ends negative. If in the role play they kill a hostage or two to get what they want, you are not going to storm the place, he is not going to go to jail, He's, in other words, there's no real payoff. When it's all over, Reality is very different. Through. A lot of people talk big. People say things like, you know, well, how many times you get in a fight with somebody? You say, I'll kill you, right? How many times does that slip out? Something like, are you really going to kill them? Of course not. In a role play, you can do that easy. In real life, there's a real penalty to pay. And it becomes very strong. So he won't want to hear all these things that you say. If you call him Charlie and his name is Fred and he gets uptight by it, he will think you made a mistake. Well, he won't hear it. He'll hear it as Charlie. So a final note on Harvey Schlossberg, Ph.D. Before we hit a cool news clip, NBC, with Keenan and Harvey, a lot of people may not know that he was also a retired associate professor at St. John's University, and he did that for many years. He was an associate professor of criminal justice, and he was chair and associate professor for the Division of Criminal Justice, Legal Studies, and Homeland Security. So enjoy the NBC clip, and I hope that you enjoyed this shorty on Harvey Schlossberg. Do you have any good leads, uh, Chief Keenan? Any particular uh, people under surveillance or, or ones that you feel where, where you could be getting close? Uh, since we, we organized the task force, we have received about 2,800 complaints, telephone uh, complaints for bits of information, telephone calls, letters from 
and visits from people. Uh, many of these, of course, were discarded after initial investigation, but uh, a, a number of those pieces of information are still, still interesting enough to us to, to keep working on the particular person involved so that uh, I, I would hesitate to characterize these people as suspects, but uh, there are a number of people who we are, we are still interested in uh, and we are uh, keeping tabs on them. Dr. Schlossberg, uh, son of Sam, has emerged in recent weeks to write letters to uh, both the police department and to, or, or to leave at least a note at the scene of one of his crimes and to write a letter to columnist Jimmy Breslin. What kind of a psychological profile have you been able to come up with? On well, this I case? think the, the leaving of letters in and of itself is kind of a switch. I think at this point, uh, his, his original uh, reason for committing the crimes has changed. I think now he's into the kind of uh, uh, enjoying the publicity uh, aspect of this. I see it as a kind of a uh, uh, becoming a cat and mouse thing. In a sense, he visualizes himself the moriarty of the day, uh, outsmarting the police, uh, leaving them clues, and the uh, police can't get anywhere. And so uh, the game has kind of changed for him. Uh, in a sense, it's kind of a secondary game now. Originally, the pleasure was in the killing. The pleasure now is in the outsmarting of the police. Dr. Schlossberg, what sort of a man do you think you're going to find when and if you find and arrest this fellow? Well, I think contrary to what most people believe, you're not going to find anybody with red eyes foaming at the mouth. You're going to find a very normal-looking, functioning individual that has these periods. I guess we kind of call them transient breaks. It's kind of like a pressure cooker. Uh, he goes along fine, functioning normal, obviously not calling attention to himself when the pressure just gets too much and he kind of flips his lid for that period of time. So he's a schizophrenic of some kind because well, he describes himself as son of Sam and he says Sam has a great thirst for blood and so on as if there's another figure at work in his life. Well, again, I, I think uh, popular belief is that uh, someplace there's a little old man named Sam who's directing this operation. My feeling is that somehow Sam perhaps symbolically stands for the revolver. This is the thing that can't be satisfied. Uh, no matter how many times it discharges, the level of tension remains the same. Chief Keenan, what do you know about the way this man operates? Do you feel he selects his victims in advance, or how does he go about his... Uh, we don't believe he selects the victims in advance. Uh, we do, his, the way he operates is apparently he prowls by car. He ro roams the neighborhood by car, and. Uh, when he sees a likely target, gets out and uh, stalks them by foot. Uh, he is, uh, if the couple, generally is shot at couples sitting in parked cars, and he approaches the car from the rear and shoots through the window. Uh, on several occasions, he've, uh, he's approached a person on foot, asked directions, and then shot uh, at close range. Uh, the, the last shooting, as you know, occurred outside a discotheque, uh, which is a likely place to, to, uh, for couples to come out of. Uh, it's quite possible that he is looking at, at these locations for, uh, to uh, select targets. Dr. Schlossberg raised the possibility that he's now engaged in some kind of a public game of cat and mouse with the police department. Do you think that the extraordinary amount of attention that this case has been getting, and with good reason has been getting attention, because he has become a great threat to public safety of people in, in Queens and, and in the Bronx especially, do you think that that has helped or hindered your case? After all, it has kind of smoked him out. I, I think the, the publicity has been helpful. Uh, it, if we think in terms alone uh, of the number of uh, bits of information and uh, tips we get from the public, many of them are very interesting, uh, telling us about people who are members of their family or, or people that are acquaintances of theirs who may fit this description. These things we wouldn't have gotten without publicity. We got well over 900 calls and letters since June 26th uh, last week. You had a theory before about the publicity and whether it... I think the, uh, the publicity uh, is beneficial in a sense that it, uh, it may give him uh, this substitute. Uh, I would personally prefer he gets his gratification through the press rather than having to kill. And I think this, uh, he can make this substitute successfully. Dropping letters is better than shooting people. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And we wish you, of course, the best luck in, in this case that goes on now. Please leave your thoughts and comments. These short podcasts are designed to provoke thought and dialogue within the Son of Sam community. Everybody is welcomed. Keep it clean. Keep it classy. 
and I cannot wait for the next one. Thank you so much for joining me, Cracklin' Rosie, at Cracklin' Rosie True Crime.